itself. Well, this was, though, certainly a bad week for the president all around, as we can see pretty clearly. And the calls for his resignation are growing louder by the day. Joining us now are two members of the House Armed Services Committee, Alabama Congressman Jerry Carl and Michigan Congresswoman Lisa McLean. Good to see you all. Good to be here. Good to be with you, Sean. You bet. Uh, Congresswoman McLean, I want to start with you. I get Democrats have a majority, and impeachment would not pass, right? That's what our leader in the Senate has said. That's what the Republican leader in the House has said. But why not try? Why not put every Democrat on the record on whether or not they support President Biden? Listen, I think that's a great idea. I think, and I would support that. The only, the only negative with that is, think about it. If we impeach the president, who would we be left with? Kamala? I mean, she laughs at the border crisis. She chuckles at the, the crisis in Afghanistan. This administration is sad. Lack of leadership. And as it pertains to Joe Biden, I mean, say it with me, Sean, dementia. What is the other answer for this? This is an embarrassment. We are losing credibility across the world. I mean, and you said it best, when, when CNN agrees with Newsmax, I mean, that's cats and dogs living together. <laughs> yeah, there, there is no question that President Biden has lost uh, the support of many in the mainstream media. But uh, Congressman Carl, we know that the progressives and the centrist Democrats have really been in charge of what's happening in the House of Representatives. But we also saw that Republicans actually won a big vote with respect to defense funding. A group of Democrats joined them on their budget uh, proposal. Do you think this is going to be a model going forward? I think, you know, the House Armed Service Committee, I, I, we, we really try to work together. That's one committee that we, we really try to focus on how, how to take care of our, our, uh, our, our soldiers and our Marines and our Navy. Uh, and we, we spent a lot of time with one another. So it was very positive. We did have some blow up moments uh, when critical race theory came up. The, the room erupted for about 40 minutes. But, but you know, other than that, we, we, we play well together, pretty well together. And they understand I mean, what, the, what the president sent us was underfunded. Uh, and uh, we, you know, through leadership, we were able to bring that up. We we raised it, I think, by 25 million the other night. And we we got it got it locked in. Yeah, but the nice part is, is that you guys got the Democrats to go along with the Republicans. Fighting and you know for what we believe in sometimes actually works. Congressman McLean, though, I, I got to ask you. We talked about the increase in the budget there. Do we or will we have the military assets to combat terrorism going forward? It's going to be tough. I'll be honest with you. It's going to be very difficult. And I think you're going to see it with the pullout of, of in the exodus from Afghanistan. If you don't think we're going to spend more money to fight terrorism, whether, it, whether it's abroad mm -hmm. or domestically, that's coming. Because our exit was so pathetic um, and it was executed extremely poorly, I think you're going to see a lot more funding that's going to be needed. But I'm, I'm with my colleague. At least we got a big 3% increase, which is big. It's unfortunate that we didn't get more because this is the one area of government that I think we do need to spend money on because this is the least discrimination, discriminating piece of the budget to, to protect all Americans. Um, I, I think, we, you know, listen, we have a war with China. Um, we have Russia. Now with us completely out of Afghanistan, that leaves us extremely vulnerable. And I, I really don't think our military has a real good plan for how to fill that gap. Right. And, and really, that's the role of the government, which is to protect our, our country. Uh, but let's go back to the budgets. We saw Democrat Senator Joe Manchin is now urging his fellow Democrats to hit pause on Biden's $3.5 trillion budget. Uh, in an op-ed for the Wall Street Journal, Manchin wrote, amid inflation, debt, and the inevitability of future crisis, uh, Congress needs to take a strategic pause. What today's job report revealed is a government yes. problem. You mentioned this, Sean. Uh, we are paying people not to work. Congressman Carl, uh, what do you think is going to be the end result when it comes to this budget? Are, is, is Congress going to continue to just keep footing the bill? Well, the Democrat Party right now is like a bunch of drunken sailors that have hit a port. I mean, they're, they're just spin, 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 spin. And, and I think that's what Manchin is trying to do is tell them, let's stop. 
let's spend responsibly. Let's figure out, you know, just because we've quote unquote approved $3.5 trillion, we don't have to spend it. And I think that's what Manchin is trying to tell them. Slow up. Let's take a look at it. And, and we will all agree, Republicans and Democrats, we would like to see a, an infrastructure package, but a true infrastructure package. Uh, you know, all the side things that they want to throw in here, the Green Deal and, and, and home, all this, this, this fuzzy stuff they want to stick in and call it infrastructure. We, we've got to do away with that. We've got to clean that out. And I think that's what Manchin is trying to say. Let's slow it up. We, this self-imposed deadline that the president has set, most like he set the deadline to get us out of Afghanistan, is just going to get us in trouble. And I, and I think the president better start listening to people like Joe Manchin that's got a little bit of common sense about him. Agreed. Agreed. I got to ask you, we're out of time, but I want both of you to give me as quick of an answer as you can. There's a lot of people who have said that the military leadership, specifically General Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, should be held accountable. Do you agree with that? Congressman Absolutely. McLean, I'll start with you. Absolutely, 100%. And this is a time for leadership to lead. And the problem is, is they continue to cover up, they continue to lie, they continue to massage the perception with the American people. And you know, the American people don't expect perfection, but they do expect honesty and transparency. And shame on them for not doing that. And at the end of the day, yeah. somebody's held accountable. Congressman Carl, that, real quick, that, that, do you agree that the military yeah. leadership needs to be held accountable? Yes, but I want it hung around the president's neck. I mean, he's he's supposed to, he said himself the buck stops here. So it, right. it's a, it's the president's responsibility. And 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 these these are our our political positions as far as the military is concerned. So it's the president as far as I'm concerned. That's what I'm focused okay. on. All right, thank you both for being with us. I hope you have a great weekend. You too. Same to you. Take care. See you, Lisa. Even. Bye. <laughs> All right.